Welcome to 2 plus 0 dash cooking and we are making Fairberry Pho today. If you've never had Pho before, then stick around. Hello, my name is B and if this is your first time here, thank you for stopping by. I make small tasty recipes for me and my plus one out of our tiny apartment kitchen. Our recipes are small, easy on the budget, and easily scalable for more servings. So let's get going on this Fairbury Pho. My parents that live in Fairbury, Illinois, out in the middle of the sticks. So I wanted to help them make a dish. This Pho is going to do well. The recipe for this Pho is going to be based around ingredients at their home. We're going to make two types of Pho. We're going to make chicken pho for my plus one and beef pho for myself. Now in terms of the chicken, you want chicken that's close to the bone. Chicken wings, drumsticks, go with that first. And then you could toss in, you know, some chicken breast later on. Same thing with the meat. So this is beef neck bone. It's probably 30% meat, but that's what we're doing. And that's going to add so much flavor. Okay, I have veggies chopped up here. I have two-thirds of a white onion, half a cup of celery, and a half a cup of carrots, and five medallions of ginger. Not peeled, it's, I just cut it. Because this is going to go all into the broth. And what you don't like, you can pick it out. Go ahead and salt these proteins in the veggie. And you don't need to do a lot. Just a couple of dashes each. Stir it around. So you want to take the chicken and put it in a preheated stove at 425 degrees and run it for 20 minutes so it gets a nice browning on it. Do the same thing with the beef. Put the veggies in the stove and you want to brown it slightly burnt. But you need to give these guys a little bit of oil on top before you braise them. I've been cooking this chicken 350 degrees in 10 minutes and then I just flipped it over. It was nicely browned. After 10 minutes of braising at 350 degrees on both sides, this man meat is done and it's time to put the veggies in. I took the braised beef and the braised chicken and placed them into separate pots. Each pot has enough cold water that would cover at least an inch. These veggies look like they're ready. Well, less than 10 minutes in the air cooker. But now is about a good time to add some aromatics. I'm going to put about a tablespoon coriander seed, cloves, a half a teaspoon. If you have cinnamon sticks, I'm going to take one stalk, which is about two inches, and I'm going to put half of it in there. Now, if you don't have cinnamon stick, you can go ahead and use cinnamon powder. The last item is star anise. I'm going to put like two. I'm going to put the lid on it, toast it up for like five minutes. So now that the chicken broth and the beef broth are starting to come up to a warmer temperature, you're going to see material floating on top of both broths. It is just go in there and just scoop that stuff off. And as this comes up further in temperature, you may see a little bit more foam appear. Go ahead and pick that out as well. We're going to go ahead and add all the things that we toasted previously. I'm just going to divide it equally between the two pots. I went ahead and added two cups of water each pot. And now we're going to go ahead and lit it. And we're going to turn up the heat to about one third power and we're just going to let that simmer for the next two hours. Every now and then you can check and you're losing a lot of water to evaporation. Feel free to add the water. Well these have been stewing here for like three hours which is a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and turn down the heat. Yeah I have this strainer here. This would have come in really handy when you're straining out that foam or whatever that was developing on top. But I just wanted to let you guys have an other option if you don't happen to have one of these strainers. The reason for taking it out is because I'm going to take this chick and then I'm going to break it up. That's going to be really good. Oh, that is so tender. That is going to be a great lunch. Breaking, you know, taking the meat out and I'm going to shred it a little bit with two forks. 
I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that beef broth and put it in the jar. And I'm going to do the same thing with the chicken broth. If I need chicken broth, beef broth, I'm good to go. So now that the broth has come up to temperature, I'm going to go ahead and add the noodles. I like vermicelli. So we're going to put that in there. And then my plus one, she likes rice noodles. I like to season it. I like fish sauce. I'm going to put about half a teaspoon fish sauce into my beef broth. And my plus one, she's not feel the fish sauce so much. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to season hers with salt. This is actually like eight shakes of each. I like that. That's really savory. And this is going to be ready for lunch. You have mint that I pulled up here. I have cilantro, sweet chilies, I chopped up cherry tomatoes, some lime, some sprouts, white onion. I have green onion. Now what you will find in a lot of Vietnamese restaurants in the United States is hoisin. So we're going to put a little bit of that on each. The other item that you'll find regularly is uh, plum sauce. So we'll put a little bit of that. So what I did was I made this sauce. A little oil, added some other peppers to it. Tastes really good. And then I took some Smucker's jelly and then I mixed it together and I didn't even heat it up. And I tasted this earlier and this stuff's it's really good. It's good and it's different. And the meat is so tender. It's just like it won't even stay in a spoon in one piece. Have all the garnishes that we spoke about. And I put a little bit of mint, a little bit of cilantro in both to get them started. I hope you guys give this a try. It's really great. I started on this like around 8 o'clock this morning. And this is going to be a great lunch. This is hers. I'm going to give this to her. Okay, I'm not really good with the chopsticks. But I do know how to eat. So let's get started on this. A little bit of the noodles, a little bit of the soup onion, cilantro that's in there. Take some of this sauce, of one type of sauce, and then taste it. Mmm. Oh my god, let's go. Let's not forget the mint. Oh, we still have some lime. Let's put a little lime on the mint. Oh yeah, when you have this pho with mint, it lets you know you're eating a Vietnamese pho. Mm. Unbelievable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for stopping by. Hope to see you soon. Talk to you guys later. Adios, amigos. Thank you so much for watching this video, Making Fairberry Fa. If you like this video, then please like us below. There are also links on the screen for other 2 plus 0 dash cooking recipes. Remember to subscribe and you'll be notified new videos every week. As always, I have a summary of this recipe below in the description. And also please visit our website, 2plus0-cooking.com. If you have any comments or ideas, then please post them below. We love hearing from our viewers and answering their questions. We also invite our viewers to share their ideas and recipes with each other in the comments section. Thank you for watching, looking forward to hearing from you, and see you soon. Be foul. As always, just because I'm done cooking after this recipe doesn't mean our kitchen is closed. The following are images for a future meal for me and my plus one. Enjoy.